And I wonder what Rudy Giuliani would have done if somebody had tried to file a stock offering which showed Camp Liberty in the way it was originally shown when the reality is what we've seen. They'd be in jail so fast for stock fraud, for violating the expectations of people. This is a scandal. This is a fraud. A fraud not involving money, but a fraud involving threats to human life. What we need immediately is a commission of inquiry to determine how this fraud was perpetrated. Who <laughs> certified? Who approved that hellhole, that garbage dump? Who said that it met United Nations standards? Somebody is responsible for perpetrating that fraud and for getting 400 innocent people to risk their lives and their health. But let me tell you what is going on, and it's much more serious than that, because I'm on the phone repeatedly with people from the State Department and from the United Nations, and we know that they are blaming the victims. They are blaming the victims. They are issuing reports saying, well, it was the victims who threw the garbage. It was the victims who turned on the water and used up the water spouts. It was the victims who made this place unlivable. That is the oldest excuse in the world. What does, what does Camp Liberty look like to, to, to me? This isn't a jail. This is a concentration camp. That's what it is. This is a concentration camp. Let's call it what it is. This is, a, this is worse than any facility I've ever seen, having been one time in charge of the Federal Bureau of Prisons and another time responsible for the New York City jail system, Rikers Island. Uh, materially better than this. This is a concentration camp. Why are we allowing people who are under our protection to go to a concentration camp? And here's the question that plagues me and really bothers me. Why are we relocating them at all? So we have transferred 400 people from Ashraf to Liberty, which, as you see, is, was not as it was told. We were lied to. Let's not be mince words. This We were flatly lied to. The pressure is enormous now on the government of the United States of America to remove the people from Liberty and send them to the West, where they'll be safe. Not only the conditions outrageous, but the fact is there isn't room for 400 more people in Camp Liberty right now. So the United States government must remove the people from Camp Liberty, send them to Western places that will take the refugees before we transfer the next 400. Well, we worry about the credibility of the UN in the United States. One of the greatest concerns I have is that Mrs. Rajavi relied on representations by others she wanted to believe in and they breached faith with her. Many of us here on the dais were aware of the representations made to Mrs. Rajavi as well, and we believed them too. And they turned out to be false, a hoax, a cruel hoax. Representations were made that were wrong. And we're not about to spend a lot of time accusing people, although somebody's got to figure out why they were made. If, in fact, more of our fellow Americans, if more in the business community, in all walks of life, saw those photographs of Camp Liberty, they would recognize that circumstances have changed. These issues may be humanitarian at base, but they, of course, have enormous geopolitical consequences. As we move forward to the U.S. Mayor's Conference and coming in June, is pass a resolution there on behalf of Camp Ashraf and Camp Liberty. And again, educate more Americans about the injustice that is taking place right here in the world. The MOIS works hard to make the truth hard to detect, to eliminate Iran's rivals, and to blame the MOIS's targets such as the MEK. We all know about the discrete challenges that are posed by uh, Iran. There's the problem of the MEK, Camp Ashraf, Camp Liberty, about which we've heard so much eloquent, clear assessment and recommendations about what is the right thing to do. The time now and everything we need to do now speaks of action to resolve a present danger that exists in Ashraf, in Iraq, and for these wonderful people who have suffered so much. And so, 
I'm only asking that you now do the right thing. No one today, no person in policy, in a policy making role in America or in the world today can say they didn't know what was happening. If the worst occurs, think about this, policymakers. You cannot say, I didn't know. You do know. You can act. You must act. 